in the name of the creator of the heavens and the earth. I am Dr. Garuda Somanna of Hyderabad and I warmly welcome you to this third episode on the series entitled During and After COVID-19. Despite observing two months of lockdown, the COVID-19 has not been eradicated, but there are increasing numbers of new cases being added every day. Central and state governments are in this quandary how to safely lift the lockdown and restart the economy. At this stage of disease progression, it is worthwhile to take a note of this fact. All super crowded metropolitan cities and other major cities have been affected while the vast countryside is free from the scourge of this disease. I say, that the dying economy should be allowed to take birth in the rural areas where this disease hasn't spread and where lockdown restrictions aren't required. Soon after they were given permission to leave, many of the migrant laborers have left cities and departed for their villages. Some of them traveled in buses and ceramic trains organized by the government, while others traveled in private vans and trucks. Some made it on cycles. Some who couldn't wait for ceramic trains nor pay the fare being charged by private truck operators made it on foot. One brave girl, aged 15 years, cycled a distance of 1,200 kilometers in eight days with her injured father sitting on the pillion. One laborer caught the imagination of the country when he lugged his eight months pregnant wife and his child on a small homemade cart covering a distance of 700 kilometers in 17 days. One main reason for the migrants' urgency to reach their villages is this their desire to reach and work in their fields before the onset of the southwest monsoon. The return of the migrants to their native villages makes it easier for India to take its next step forwards in its fight against COVID-19, setting up of integrated organic farms all over the country. Having said this, let us now turn our attention to the integrated organic farm. At the center of the farm is the MUT or multi-utility tower. This is a black and white diagram of the MUT I had drawn in 1997 and I have colored it a few days ago to look like this. 
Do you like it? From below upwards, the MUT has the base unit, intermediate sections 1, 2, 3 and 4 and finally the superstructure equipped with a lightning conductor. The base unit serves as the office cum residence of the supervisor of the farm. The entire agricultural and financial operations of the farm are under his charge and the numerous activities that take place in the farm are computerized for easy planning and monitoring of each activity. The supervisor stays on the farm 24 by 7. Each intermediate section has two floors of which the lower floors are for online schools and the upper floors are for processing and packaging of foods. Children between newborns to 3 years of age will be spending this time between 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the school located in the first intermediate section. Apart from nursing mothers, senior citizens of the families of the farm hands will be giving company to the children and take care of them collectively. A qualified facilitator is appointed to teach the three hours to the children. Pregnant farm hands will have to spend at least three hours during the early stages of their pregnancy at this school. Towards the later stages of their pregnancy, they spend greater amounts of time at the school. In this way, the unborn children will get to have an idea of the place where they will stay once they are born. And also, they will learn the basics of the three hours while yet in the womb. Twice in a day, the children, accompanied by their guardians, will be taken out to a planned tour of the vast integrated organic farm. Those of them who haven't yet started walking will be taken out in prams. In this gentle manner, the tiny tots are introduced to the world outside, learn from all they see and watch the various works being carried out by the farm hands. Children aged 4 to 6 years attend school on the second intermediate section. Those aged between 7 to 9 years have their school in the third intermediate section, while those aged between 10 to 12 years have their school in the fourth intermediate section. These kids receive online classes from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and have the assistance of facilitators to help them understand. Senior citizens are appointed as guardians over them and after their classes are over by 8 a.m. they are walked outdoors to specific sections of the integrated organic farm. Till it is time for lunch, the children spend time at playing, learning and working. The four field roads of the farm are used for playing. The children also learn about the various work processes of the farm during this period. They are also required to joyfully carry out small works along with the senior citizens. Small farm works like picking up of fallen leaves, flowers and twigs and take them away in a donkey's cart to the composting section of the farm. Lunch over, the children and their guardians return to their schools and spend time indoors in carrying out several activities related to processing and packaging of foods grown in the farm. At 5 p.m., the children walk back to their homes. These children have no school bags to carry, no homeworks to do, and best of all, no exams to write. When they reach 12 years of age, the children start working on the farm from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. before attending online classes at these three schools located on the second, third and fourth intermediate sections. The subjects they learn online are based upon their future careers either as farmhands or in the medical field, veterinary medicine included. The courses taught to the budding farmhands equip them to maintain and repair the various machineries that are used on the farm. After three hours of intense study, they return to their works in the farm. When the teens reach sweet 16, all those who are burning have to get married, while those males who have no sexual desires can be given the option to train up to be a farm supervisor, a job that requires for one to be a eunuch. 
the firm supervisor has the most important part to play in the running of the integrated organic firm and his training includes all aspects of the firm activities along with knowledge of finance and trade. When he completes 18 years of age, the trained supervisor with his complete free will behind the decision is castrated and given the job of a supervisor at any integrated organic firm that is in need of a supervisor. Integrated organic firms can also be given the option of adopting children who are born as eunuchs. Such children are then trained up to don the role of a farm supervisor as they grow up. Just as bees in a hive live for others, work for others and even die for others, all farmhands, supervisors included, should have the same motto, live for others, work for others and even die for others. Before closing, let me summarize the chief actions that are needed. 1. Migrants who have returned to their villages have to be offered lucrative jobs as farmhands at integrated organic farms to be developed in partnership with real estate developers. This is the next and most important step to be taken by the government in this COVID-19 triggered lockdown status of the country. 2. Exams free and free of cost schooling for the children of farmhands at the MUT schools. Three. Identification and training for the most important job on the integrated organic farm, the farm supervisor who is to be a eunuch. That's it for now folks. See you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. And now, the time has come for today's word. I greet every one of you in the sweetest name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am so happy that the Lord has brought me here on this day, the 11th of uh, September, am I correct? 2019 and the place which we have been worshipping the Lord so far is a place called Navara. Now, what is this place? Ratavu. It is a place called Ratavu. Praise the Lord, it is, it is near Nandi and the Lord has been so good to us and he has got his people everywhere in this world. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus the Christ has touched the hearts of so many people of different languages and when you were worshipping in the spirit, I just lost myself but again Paul says one thing, he says it is, uh, I can be beside myself but for your sake I am prepare to be sober. See, you guys, you don't have much of responsibility. So that lady who was just dancing in the Lord, she is not sober. She was simply rejoicing, enjoying herself. And that is what we have in Jesus the Christ Amen. is the joy. It is not just when you go to heaven, but the belief that we have in His truth, in His word, is a thing which is brought into our lives by the Holy Spirit, the, which is shed into our hearts. And because of this, the blessing of God, that we can be as free as the birds that are in the air. Today, in the morning, in the place where I was lodged, I was able to hear the songs of different types of birds. I have not seen them, they are in the distant trees, but their noises were different and I could praise the Lord that they are singing to God, that they are worshipping the Lord. If, because I come from Hyderabad in India and uh, also this happens to be my birthday. I was born here on this day, I was not here, I was born on this earth, let us say, on this day. And I was uh, informed by my good friend Freddy that today a birthday is being celebrated also. And uh, who is the birthday boy or girl? Oh, such a young boy. <laughs> God bless you. Hallelujah. And uh, see, God doesn't choose big, big, large, large people to speak to as he spoke to Moses, but he is well capable of speaking to small children as small as Samuel who was in the temple at the time when he was a small child. He didn't complain, my father and mother, they have forsaken me. But it is the Lord 
who picked him up and when he was preparing to sleep the lord spoke to him samuel samuel so god is capable of speaking to people irrespective of their ages whether old as me middle aged as this man who are sharing the same day as our birthdays or the small children who are in front god can speak and what is asked of the lord is that we should be prepared to hear yes lord i am your servant is hearing your servant is ready speak i samuel i'm hearing like that in when we are properly prepared god can speak to our hearts and prepare every one of us for the glory that is lying ahead and it is going to come upon this earth the promises of god are in the phases of fulfillment and it is high time that the church which is sleeping we can say in a way that it should get up from the sleep and get the light which jesus gives and be a light to this world that is perishing only when you have that burden and that vision and that fire in your heart you will be able to not only change your life to change that it is in accordance to that required state which a bride should be when the bridegroom is going to come individually we need to be having that preparation in our lives and at the same time giving the light to this dark world so that the love which jesus had that led him to the cross to die for your and my sin it is not just for your sin and my sin alone but it is the lamb that has taken away the sins of the whole world whether in fiji in hyderabad in india or any nation or any race or any language for every one of them the lord jesus has shed his blood and there is power in that blood to redeem a person to give him salvation to forgive his sins to make him escape from the hell fire that is appointed to everyone who refuses this salvation so knowing this that eternal life is based upon what jesus has done to us and that that same as the lord as the father has sent me so send us into the world how did the lord jesus send his disciples into the world as the father has sent me as the father has sent me what did he do the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost that was his that is why i have come and to lay down my life to redeem them so that is the purpose of jesus to be alive and i am glad that on this day uh, the 11th of september 2019 i am able or enabled by the lord to uh, give this sermon which i have been preparing for many days it was a great fire in my heart when i received my baptism in 1979 i attended the first service at a place called visakhapatnam and after the service was over to a mother and a, a, a daughter uh, they approached me they were staring at me it was my first service of a christian service i come from a hindu background and when they were staring at me i didn't know what to do then they said we want to pray for you okay so then i knelt down there in the church one of the rooms and while praying that lady that young lady about 17 years of age rebecca nair by name she prophesied my son fear not i will take you to many nations so that is the prophecy 1979 and i was wondering when the lord is going to fulfill my life i cannot have the time now to share that but i could see that for so many years till 2018 last uh, year uh, i landed at fiji on 11th september 2018 on the facebook i was in contact with one pastor of lautoka who said you are welcome to come to my church and when we landed here we didn't know anyone other than person whom also was just a facebook contact neither did i know any church here and uh, the person who drew the wheelchair was this young man freddy by name and how we came to him was a miracle because it was given an announcement that a person who is in need of a wheelchair would be coming by this so and so flight and there were about 10 people just in front on the place where ramp which from where when we got out of the plane 10 people were standing there and they were looking at us and we were wondering why they were there we didn't know that it was for the wheelchair purpose that an announcement had been made and all these 10 people were willing to identify the person who would be in need of a wheelchair but we just walked by and then the last person to be there he was separate and he was standing that is freddy 
and then we just approached it. So we got a wheelchair. Then opposite to the wheelchair, uh, the, the wheelchair placed to the side opposite it. He took my wife and he took us to the counters where the SIM cards are taken and the currency are changed. And it was in my heart that I should give him, uh, uh, what is that, not a, a tip like thing of $10. Uh, when I just turned around, Freddy is nowhere in sight. And then I just ran. I wanted to know because I didn't want to get a service done for free and I wanted to share uh, my, what is that, gratitude for what he had done. So I ran behind him and he had gone there. I called him and then we talked with one another. Then I told him that uh, I am a Christian and I the Lord has sent me here. He also said he's a Christian. And when I gave him that, he said, no, I do not want it. Then I forced him literally. And then we exchanged our phone numbers. And that was it. And so after landing here, uh, I called up that pastor there. And he said the next day, he called up and he said he was going to come the next day and he's going to take us to Lautaka. So I was waiting the next day till evening uh, it was to just to give him time. I waited. But when the evening came on, there was no call, so I made a call. And then still there was no answer from that end. So the next day also on a Thursday or a Friday, I made numbers of calls, but they were not being attended. His wife took it and said, uh, my husband is doing some work. I'll ask him and uh, ask him to call you. But no, then it became plain that I'd come all the way from India, spending what we have saved. It is no one who is sending it just as uh, the prophet Jonah was asked to go to one place, but he paid his fare and went into a ship to go to which place? Was he will willing to go? Did he go to Nineveh? To where did he go? Suddenly I am asking a question. I think Tarshish, no? <laughs> he, was, he was willing to go to Tarshish, but he paid the fare for it. Like that we also, we paid our own fares, came here and there is no one there. So, just I was not moved because I know the God who calls us, He knows us, He sees us. Where we are, where I'm lying down is what David says, but wherever you are, He knows, whether it's in Fiji, whether it's in whichever place. So, I just pray to Him, see, you have called me, you have saved me. And so, you should open the door. Please, Baba, what do you want? Your son, is it? Or grandson? Granddaughter, okay. Uh, what I'm worried is it, she might shake that uh, camera, you know, that, no, no, <laughs> you, that was what I was concerned about it. Come on, tell me, tell, what do you want? What do you want from your m m grandma? Tell, don't be shy. See, God is watching you, not man. Man is, maybe watching, may not be watching. So what is it? You've asked really, you, there is freedom in the presence of the Lord. What is it, that urgent thing, please? No, don't be shy. Or you go, go near to your grandma and tell her, sir, ask her into her ears, you tell her what you want. No, there is nothing wrong here. You're a small child. You can go and tell her, please, don't worry. I was also a child, but I didn't have the blessing of being a Christian and uh, attending a service. So there is no, nothing wrong. You don't want, you, later you will ask her. Okay, don't feel shy. God bless you. What's your name? What's your name? Kathy. Oh, Catherine. Catherine. My mother-in-law's name is Catherine. <laughs> her her mom is please name. <laughs> okay, that's nice. So where was I? Before Catherine came into the picture, <laughs> Ta Tarshi, she were <laughs> the, the, the fair. Yeah, God is where, wherever we are, God is there with us. And uh, soon after, I pray to the Lord, just a small prayer, not even at least three minutes. I got a call from this, hey doctor, where are you? Today, uh, there is a, what is that, youth uh, meeting and you are invited and all he said. I said, uh, I'm new to this place, you arrange for a taxi, I'll pay the fare. And so I said, I'll come and I give the direction and we went there. And we went uh, to the church he attends to. And it so happened that his own father-in-law, Pastor Levi, is his father-in-law. And so I spoke to him about 20 minutes, I shared my testimony of how I came to the Lord and why I had come to Fiji. He just said, 
this Sunday you are speaking at our church. That's all. See, the Lord, you know, He knows about our life. He knows our steps and He directs us. And if we are obedient and faithful, surely He will be with us and He will use us. Praise the Lord, all glory to Him. And uh, this time I wanted to preach at seven churches. That was my heart's desire. And yesterday also, though fully tired from such a long journey, I had prepared. This is the three sermons I prepared. Sermon one, two, and I was able to prepare three sermons in all before coming over here. And uh, the first sermon which I prepared for, God has uh, planned and thought that it should be distributed, this spiritual food, this mana we can say, at this church, at this place. Uh, what is this place? I forget. Ratambu. Ratambu. It, I forget because of age, maybe frequency, if I come frequently, maybe I'll be able to, yeah, remember Ratambu. God bless. God bless Ratambu. So we shall uh, go into today's uh, message. The heading of it, the title of it, a leader who is in the hands of Jesus as a star. A leader who is in the hands of Jesus as a Stop. Revelation 2 1. If you can take it, it's okay. Otherwise, I will read it, but you you can just hear what it is said. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So in this verse which we find in Revelation, it is the Apostle John, the eldest of the apostles to be alive at that time, maybe 90 AD, and he was exiled to an island called Patmos because he was against, or rather the, uh, the king, the Caesar, was, was against the Christian faith, and he was persecuting the Christians. And he didn't allow a Christian to be preaching, even the apostle Paul. And uh, so vexed with all his activity, they said, enough of enough of your gospel and your preachings go away to that island of Patmos and it is said that he was in that island for two years but even though he was in that island of Patmos it was God who was showing him several revelations regarding what is going to happen during that time that which is, that which was and that which is going to be all such things were was being revealed by a series of visions to the Apostle John and it is the second chapter in which he writes this, he writes a letter to the seven churches which are in Asia. The churches maybe you might not know and I also might not know unless I see it. It is Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira and it. Isn't it? Can we know the Bible in full? Sometimes we do not know Sitarshish. You may have forgotten, I have remembered, but I also may have forgotten. So whenever we forget, whenever it is needed, the Holy Spirit gives the word to our hearts. Praise the Lord. So there are seven churches in that place, in the Asia, that is not far away from the place where he was exiled. Patmos Island is in the Mediterranean Sea and in the distant coast, just I can vaguely say maybe 100-200 kilometers from this place is the coastline of the Asia and there are seven churches and the letter which he says is to the angel of the church of Ephesus. He does not write to the church but to whom is he writing? To the angel of the church. Angel means not that uh, heavenly angels but it is the messenger the messenger or the pastor of that church to whom this letter is being addressed, the letter to the Ephesians. And the next thing which we can see is that these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. So in the first chapter of Revelation we can find the Lord Jesus appearing on the Lord's day to the uh, servant, uh, the John, his beloved servant, and the way in which he was appearing, all these details are given in the first chapter. And one of the facts that John could see was that in his right hand there were seven stars. So maybe you people must have read it, 
and what i was also thinking is seven stars in the right hand of jesus might be like when some people sell uh, what is that helium balloons which go up no you know some balloons they go up if it release it they'll go away you you they sell it like that in fiji balloons that go up into the sky yeah. helium yeah. balloons yeah they fill it with gas and so i thought like seven stars might be like seven balloons in the hand of jesus that is i thought like that but today i mean when i was contemplating about this message it could un- i could understand that it's not in his hand means like that but it means that the lord jesus is holding them in his hand and is leading them like this and so the stars what are stars he is the angel and he where is he he is in the hand of jesus that is jesus is holding that pastor or the pastoress we can say today <laughs> of the church and he is leading them because in the lord jesus there is no male or female you are one in the lord jesus hallelujah praise the lord so uh, he was ha- holding them and leading them and because of the lord jesus hand because they are in the hands of jesus the christ are they ordinary angels how are they they are stars how are they what have they become stars. they have become stars have you seen the star in fiji you can see because there is less pollution but in hyderabad in such cities you know the pollution levels are gone so up that is mostly overcast and in case you are lucky you might be able to this see the stars but the stars you know john the apostle was looking at them not as earthly people but he was able to see the pastors as in heaven and not as dark stars but those that are giving light when you are asked to be a leader in the church you have to be when you are in the hand of jesus he automatically gradually makes you to become as a star in his hand in the book of daniel the 12th chapter i think you are all familiar with it let me read it and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever spiritually the stars of which god is interested is to make you and i as stars and the function of the stars is i was being asked by my wife how is it that the pilot who is in charge of the aircraft is able to know where is he headed to in which direction should he go from singapore to nadi and then i was telling see in these days these are all automated they'll be having certain apps and directions how they have to go but in those days in the darkness of the night when travel has to be done by ships they have got the stars for navigation it is the stars that lead a person to the direction to his destination the wise men who came from the east how did they know about jesus it was a special star which god created and showed to them by which they understood that the messiah was born and it was that star that led them not to bethlehem but to jerusalem in order to do certain fulfillment of his prophecies and the wise men asked that king where is he born the king of the jews i feel there is some distraction is there any delay shall i continue the message okay no problem i am trying to be slow because i should know you should know me what i am and at the same time rightly going into the word i am just giving some relaxed type of a, uh, delivery and it is the power of the holy spirit that is enabling us to talk and who is the yeah the birthday boy is that so, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament see daniel has prophesied and bright as the firmament is interpreted to be that the glorified body of jesus on the mount of transfiguration on the mount of transfiguration what happened jesus was glorified and they were able to see 
his face also shining his clothes also shining that is the glory of jesus so they that will be wise only these people are going to have the glorified bodies is the interpretation which i also understand they will be the glorified bodies which everyone who is in the hands of jesus he need not be a leader alone but any member of the church but when you are doing the function which god wants of you when you are able to stand there as a star to guide the people who are in the darkness to know where is the way then you are as a star praise the lord hallelujah and only when you do that role is it that you will be bright as the firmament they that are righteous shall shine forth as the sun in my father's kingdom not everyone is going to be glorified it is only those who are wise wise regarding what things related to salvation brings things related to the coming of the lord and faithful in being as stars to the world who do not know where to move where to go for to go to approach salvation praise the lord hallelujah so they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness they will be as the stars forever and ever there is no end they that turn many to righteousness what does that mean your gospel your sharing of the gospel today i was given the privilege to uh, share a little about my testimony on about jesus to uh, uh, one uh, indian who, who is settled in fiji and another person was a german yesterday i was able to uh, share my test no i was not able to share my test i should pray for them so in this way the, uh, the lord wants us to share to those who do not know about the truth and about the blessings that will be to a person who accepts jesus the christ as his personal savior for the forgiveness of sins and for receiving the glory only such people alone the word of god says will receive that if you just say i believe in jesus that doesn't get you anywhere it is required of you first of all to be in the hand of jesus the christ and he, yeah and whether you are a was pastor in the church whether you are a elder in the church whether you are a deaconess in the church or a deacon in the church or there are about 16 types of activities which a person in the body of christ has to do is what i have been preaching in the previous sermons i have identified about 16 roles as a christian you are to identify for which if you are a spirit spirit filled person to know what is your calling what is the work for which god has placed you in his body that is the church of the 16 there should be one at least you should know that it might be speaking in tongues interpretation of tongues exhortation giving showing compassion praise the lord healing miracles so we concentrate upon great things but we neglect the smaller things giving exhortation showing compassion you might not be able to uh, maybe do anything but it is just oh you are suffering from this i'm so sorry i'm so, that pity which flows from you no that also gives comfort to the other person who is suffering praise the lord when you are in the hands of jesus then you will be as a star do you think that those stars will be seen by everyone round about you but what does god want you to see you should be a per- you should be appearing as a star to at least to a single person at least to two persons jesus was able to save only 11 of the 12 that was given to him so you at least don't think that uh, think in vast terms think of small terms as you should be a star at least to 10 people you ask for the lord that through you they are turned towards righteousness and this turning to righteousness does not it is not a, a moments admission you know it is just the start of a life it is you who after they have turned to the lord you should mentor them you should pray for them 
which you should exhort them you should teach them the word of god and you should be sure that they are receiving the eternal life for which jesus has died if you have such a burden for that it means that you automatically you yourself are preparing yourself for salvation you will be personally shining as the firmament and receiving that glory for which jesus has died and promised on the other hand it is you who are also responsible for preparing the other people whom god has given to you to lead them unto glory understand hallelujah first corinthian 9th chapter first and second verses the apostle paul he says like this am i not an apostle am i not free have i not seen jesus christ our lord are you not my work in the lord if i be not an apostle unto others yet doubtless i am to you for the seal of my apostleship are you in the lord here apostle paul is being looked down upon by the corinthian church because of the entry of other people who are making themselves as pastors as making themselves leaders but they are not teaching the pure doctrine which paul has taught and he was in that state where his apostleship was in doubt and at that time he was writing to them the seal of my apostleship is this that you are in the lord it's not an ordinary thing for you to just preach the bible but when god is you when god is ministering through you it is only at that time that a person will turn to the lord you cannot do anything of yourself without me as a vine as the branches can only when remaining in the vine they can be fruitful so also without me you can do nothing so whatever you try to minister to others in order to lead them to christ if you are not in the hands of jesus the christ all your efforts are in the flesh it is not of the spirit and you might have a self satisfaction oh i have told this and that but when you are burdened by the spirit ministering to others trying to tell them about the righteousness of god and leading them to salvation god will be with you and god will make you fruitful that to him whomever you are ministering they will be saved maybe not in your lifetime even after you got that's okay at some time your prayers and your efforts will not go in vain our labor will never be in vain in the lord are you here amen praise the lord and so he was telling them the seal of my apostleship is that you corinthians who have been earlier idolaters who have been drunkards who have been fornicators who have been all sorts of mischief you people you are now in the lord it is because i am sealed for this work and because of that you are in the lord see when you are in the lord you are being used by the lord then only you can be able to shine as the stars that are turning people to the righteousness hallelujah and turning others to righteousness is good but as along with that you have this responsibility of taking care of yourself the lord prophesied no stone will be another all will be thrown down any prophecy of the end times of how the world will be and during that time the apostles three or four went there and privately asked him lord when will all this be the first thing which he cautioned was take heed of yourself what should we do as a christian we have to take heed to ourselves to our thoughts to our words to our ambitions to our works what we are doing we should be very careful and trembling that is what in philippians it is said work out your salvation in trembling you should be afraid that you may lose it that after i preach to others i may some but be a castaway that is what paul has got in himself so uh, in first uh, corinthians 927 he says but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a castaway being a christian is a life long till your goes away until such a time you should be in the hands of jesus the christ 
and you should know that you have been a sanctified person. In the days of old, before the Lord Jesus had come, when a king was to be given the function and the responsibility of being a king, he used to be anointed. Saul was anointed. David was anointed. And that anointing means that you are made apart. You are sanctified. You are set apart for the work of God. It might be of that of a king. The prophets, they were anointed. Moses anointed Joshua. Praise the Lord. Moses anointed Aaron. And priests also were anointed. Prophets also were anointed. The prophet Elijah was given the uh, instruction that Elisha should be anointed. So what does that anointing do? He, he, the Holy Spirit enables you to the, do the mind of God in your life. He has got a plan for you. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works that have been ordained before the foundations of the well. So that the anointing brings into you the mind of God, the purpose of God in your life. And accordingly, when you are walking in the Spirit, walking with Jesus, holding His hand, then He makes you as a star. Hallelujah. He makes you fruitful. And while doing so, while you are preparing others for glory, you should not neglect your own salvation. You should take care of yourself to see that you are sanctified, you are sanctified, you are set apart, you are made holy for the Lord's work. Even every vessel that was being used for the whole tabernacle, it, they were also anointed. So this is the purpose that anointing does. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Paul, we can find that he is exhorting Timothy to do this. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Timothy is being said that you continue to take heed to yourself, to the doctrine which you are preaching. And when you do this thing, when you are continuing in them, then only you will save yourself and you will be able to, those who are hearing you preach, hearing your sermons, Praise the Lord. What is it? Is it raining or something? Some noise is coming about? What is it? Rain, huh? Let the rain of the Holy Spirit also come and drench us. <laughs> In Acts 20, 28 also we find, uh, Paul the Apostle calls the elders of the church at Ephesus and what he tells them is, take heed therefore unto yourselves. See that you don't become uh, greedy or covetous coveting others. See, if you are a uh, pastor, you come into a level of uh, respect from the other members in the congregation, then there is always a chance for your heart to become covetous, greedy for the others, gold or silver or nothing like that. But he says, no, I work for my own livelihood with my own hands and I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold. And what I have eaten is what I have worked with my own hands and I have set an example to you. So, you also, you elders of this church of Ephesus, you take heed for yourselves and to all the flock. You have, if you are a pastor, it is something like the sheep around you who are prone to be attacked by wolves. Wolves means, do you think these are the ordinary wolves? No. It is people who come as... A, in sheep's clothing, false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. People will appear just like a very good man of God, but inside they are grievous wolves. They don't want to feed you, but rather they want to feed upon you. So that is where to be in a role of a leader of a church, that leader should have that specific quality of discernment. If anybody comes to the church like me, I should have been first asked, who are you? What is your doctrine? What are you doing? That Pastor Levi heard my testimony for about 20 minutes and then he was convinced that it is the Lord who has led me and then uh, he opened the door. I am the door and by me only anyone can come into the 
fold. But by other ways, people who are robbers and stealers, they don't come by the name of Jesus. That is the hallmark of a false prophet. They don't come in the name of the Lord, but they come by some other way, some other doctrine, and in some way spoil the sheep. They are robbers and thieves is what the Lord Jesus has won. Hallelujah. I am not, uh, I mean, finding fault with good uh, brother Babu and uh, sister. Sister, what's your name? Susan. Hmm? Susan. Susan, yeah, sister Susan, yeah. Uh, maybe it is uh, Freddie who has uh, given you about me some uh, background. You have, maybe you have done a background study and that's the way the Lord has opened the door uh, to this church. And uh, uh, my desire that uh, every one of you, you know, it, you, when you go to heaven, you know what will be the reward? It is not even being happy that you have received that glorified body. But the Apostle Paul says to the Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, he says, For what is our hope, or what is our joy, or what is the crown of our rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? When Jesus comes, and when Jesus gives a glorified body to the faithful, wonderful man of God, Apostle Paul, he will not be much happy. But when he sees, hey, that Timothy to whom I preach the word, he is also there. That brother, who is that Aristarchus, that brother Onesimus, this brother Philemon, these people are there in glory. His heart is filled with joy. That is the joy. When you go to heaven, if you are just alone here, I mean, it is very rare for a person to come there without being doing the Lord's work here. But the real joy, which the real reward, which Apostle John says, is that it's not what we receive, but seeing what others, the eternal life for which Jesus has died. When you see others there in glory, that should be your reward, as uh, the Apostle Paul states here. See, we all want our children to be always in good positions in life. Likewise, when you are a spiritual father who has given birth to children, and when you see those children of yours, the spiritual children of yours, in a good state with the Lord Jesus Christ, and in a time to come in the holy Jerusalem, that new city that's going to come from God, from heaven in the new heavens and earth, and when you are rejoicing in the presence of God for all eternity, your joy is this, that the Lord has used me to lead such and such sister and such a brother and such a sister to this glory should be your goal. I mean, this is the way in which the Lord has prepared me for this first sermon. And uh, I am uh, sure that uh, the Spirit has spoken. He that hath a ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches is a thing that is repeated to the end of every letter. He that hath a ear, let him hear what the Spirit has said to the churches. Small children are there, they are working, they are moving here and there, it's okay. But uh, when, it, when you are able to receive this word of the Lord and commit yourself to be in the hand of Jesus, He will make you as a star that turns many to righteousness and you, you will be able to take care of yourself and have a burden for them, others who are not yet saved, or those who have saved also, you continually remember them in your prayers, and when they are also brought up in glory, that is joy unspeakable. The Lord bless us all, for this time is given. I thank Brother Bobo and Sister Susan for this, and I thank you for every member of this church. I had a nice time here, singing and dancing and playing the flute. Thank you all. Praise the Lord. Amen.